Okay, the, uh, the seventh lesson is that patience is a virtue and you have to learn to listen more and speak less. So in the article, uh, it basically says you need to be patient. You have to practice what they call a cold shower approach. Uh, just when you think you know enough to make a decision, stop, think, uh, listen, and don't react. Maybe sleep on your decision, and perhaps uh, you will make a different decision. So I'm not too sure how this type of lesson or this type of tip would actually apply. What I would really do is just focus on having greater self-awareness. Uh, self-awareness is understanding how your words and your approach and your mannerisms and your behaviors are perceived by other people. And then uh, having obviously cultural awareness to understand what is the Chinese culture, what do they value, what are their priorities. Sometimes it's beneficial to be low key uh, sometimes it's not. And it's all about understanding how to manage perceptions of other people. So that is really uh, what I have to say about number seven. Uh, number eight is don't set artificial deadlines and control your emotions. So actually, I think this is a really good tip if you want to call it a tip. Um, you should never have an artificial deadline. Uh, because in China, you never know when you're going to reach that level of guanxi where people are comfortable moving forward. Even if you get uh, the other party to sign a contractual agreement, it's important to keep in mind that in China, the negotiations actually never ends. And uh, figuratively speaking, sometimes we say the negotiations begins after the contract is signed because China is basically the Chinese are basically thinking that, um, you know, the agreement that we sign on the paper just really means that we're committed to working together. And everything after that is, number one, it's mutable. But number two, it's based on the level of guanxi that we develop. Now, I do think it is important to have a higher level of emotional intelligence. But I think having a higher EQ is not just beneficial in negotiations in China. It's beneficial no matter what you're doing. Um, there's one mistake that I've seen a lot of foreigners make, and that is they think of something is really important to them. Uh, being emphatic about it actually helps get their point across. Uh, they'll basically say, you know, they may pound their fist and they'll, they'll, they'll raise their voice and they'll really kind of stress something that they really think is important, thinking that being emphatic actually gets that point across. And in my opinion, that's really a big mistake because once you start getting emotional, once you start getting emphatic, uh, the Chinese people are actually no longer focused on the content of what you're saying. They become more focused on the emotions that you're displaying. So you're gonna actually have the opposite intended effect when you are emphatic, all right? So let's see, number nine uh, in the lessons from the Forbes article is to be fair, reasonable, and diplomatic. So it basically says if your China counterpart believes that you are being unreasonable, they may not openly say so, but your negotiations are likely to stall and go nowhere. So. Um, yeah, I guess that's really a good tip. But the, the thing to really keep in mind when you're negotiating in China is that Chinese people a lot of times are vague and they are not deliberately vague because they're trying to be deceitful or dishonest. It's just the cultural way of, of the way that they, that they communicate. So I'll give you an example. Um, you know, it's very rare in a collectivist society, and especially in one in which they're used to a top-down command and control hierarchy for uh, subordinates. And you have to keep in mind that everybody is subordinate to someone, uh, unless you're Chairman Mao. Um, it's very rare for subordinates to want to take direct responsibility for something that turns out. Uh, unfavorable or bad. 
So the general habit and the natural instinct is always to kind of make an excuse. And so what you don't want to do is you don't want to read too much into, as we said in some of the previous comments, the literal words that are coming out of people's mouths. So, uh, yeah, so be diplomatic. Um, you know, don't simply uh, reject something that you disagree with. Um, I, yeah, I think that all of that is important. So let me see what. So Westerners don't really understand the value of actually being deliberately vague as an art of war tactic during negotiations. Yeah. So uh, what I would say is that when I, I'm advising uh, my clients and the people that I coach when they get into negotiations is you really have to find the right balance between being uh, transparent and open and putting all your cards on the table and being deliberately vague. Uh, and that's basically when we talk about how do you align with your, uh, the people that you're negotiating with. And, and our recommendation is always to align on process as opposed to aligning on values. So those are obviously something that really we get more deeper to, into in our training and some of our, some of our courses. But, uh, the general, uh, recommendation or my feedback on that is uh, you have to understand that sometimes uh, for Chinese people being vague is cultural sometimes as a tactic or a strategy for negotiations uh, it's something that you need to train yourself to do and that is to be deliberately vague and sometimes being deliberately vague is also a way to give more face uh, which is really important in the negotiations process uh, when you're negotiating with Chinese people. All right. So the last, uh, the last, let's see, the last lesson in this Forbes article is nothing succeeds like indifference. So in love and in business, it's never a good idea to be overly anxious, even though you may feel otherwise a bit of indifference helps to preserve your leverage in any relationship. Okay. So, uh, yeah, this also relates a little bit to the uh, my comment on the previous lesson, and that is about being deliberately vague as a tactic, as an art of war tactic. So this is basically saying the same thing. It's just being a little bit indifferent sometimes will help your bargaining power or help your negotiating position. But I think what it really creates, it, it really helps you kind of align more with how Chinese people communicate and you will find that they're deliberately vague and sometimes they're deliberately indifferent to the things that you propose uh, or you can actually it's very obvious that they're just giving you face when they say oh yeah that's great um, and, and that is something that requires a little bit of training and practice and that is how to be flexible uh, how to be not indifferent, but how to not act overly anxious. And the way to do that is really the mindset adjustment where you're not really focusing on specifics, like getting what you want, because you already know exactly what you want, but you're more focused on trends and you're more, more focused on aligning on process. And a lot of that mindset adjustment will just naturally help you perform better, not only during the negotiations, but also during the lifetime of the partnership that you are developing. Okay. So I hope this kind of discussion helps with your understanding and visualization of how to make some adjustments to your attitude, mindset, and approach as you're going into China and engaging in these negotiations. As always, uh, we all learn more with more discussion. So uh, leave a comment, ask a question, and let's continue to try to refine how we understand how to do business in China and how to make the adjustments of the only thing that we can control, which is ourselves. And if we can adjust our own attitude, mindset, and approach, uh, we will achieve much better outcomes over the long run.